So it seems like we're finally returning to a little bit of normalcy in this crazy world, but obviously we still have a long way to go. I'm constantly seeing and hearing stories about people going places and doing things again. All the while, I'm still huddled here in my room, hiding behind a mask, because... Well, you know, I don't want to die. God, I wish I could travel or something. I would love to go to Universal Studios, visit that Super Nintendo world. It looks like so much fun. Everything I've seen of it just makes me want to go. The saddest part is that even if COVID wasn't a thing, I still don't think I'd be going anytime soon. I mean, I in no way see a trip to Japan anywhere in my immediate future. But damn it, if I can't actually go to the theme park, then I'll do the next best thing. Or I guess it's not the next best thing. It's like 50 places down on the long list of things that I could do. Uh, the video game, I'm talking about the video game. This is a new low for the channel and for the world in general. I mean, we have video games based on movies, video games based on shows, based on toys, and now based on locations. Because why not? I mean, I for one am really looking forward to Burger King, the game. Actually, they, they have one of those. Actually, they have several of those. God damn it. Universal Studios Theme Park Adventure. What a name, what a game. A video game released in 2001 for the Nintendo GameCube, obviously based on the theme park, it was, I guess, meant to advertise going there. By simulating the amazing experience of actually going, but in the safety and serenity of your own home. Come on down, enjoy such classic attractions as E.T., Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, Waterworld, Jaws, Wild Wild West, and Backdraft. I will be playing as a young boy named Who Cares, because really, who gives a damn? Spin that roulette, which freaky mannequin child will I end up as? Ah, stupid looking kid number three. Excellent, just what I wanted. So you start off at the entrance and are quickly just flung into the park. Now prepare to run around aimlessly and search for blind purpose, because that's most of the game. Alright, well since the last video I made on this channel was about Back to the Future games, let's start off with the Back to the Future attraction. It seems fitting. So I run around for about five minutes, not really knowing where to go or what I'm looking for, and then I notice some people that I could talk to. Get a map back at the park entrance. Oh, okay, I'll run all the way back there, I guess. Thanks for telling me this at this point. Really helps. Hell, I almost walked right past the guy who was handing out these maps twice. All right, I have the map. Let's see where we are. Okay, here we go. Yeah, but seriously, this map really is useless. Maybe it's just me, but... No. No, it's not just me. I refuse to believe that. This game's map is terribly designed. And I don't mean the graphic for it. I mean the layout of everything in the world and how this game was designed from the ground up. Like, when I started playing, I was immediately overwhelmed. There are just so many people on screen that it's often hard to see where I am. On top of that, it's incredibly easy to get disoriented. The graphic for the map is all well and good, fine, I'm sure it resembles the actual park, but the orientation of the fixed camera in the actual game, more often than not, does not match the map. At all. Like, you'll go left, but on the map, you will have gone right, or up, or down. Any direction other than the one you thought you were walking. Like, I sort of get it. I'm sure that all of these different screens are based on actual sites and locales from the park. And this is meant to advertise, so of course they want to always pick the best angles to show off the things that they want to show off. But it just makes navigating so annoying. It's awful. I hate walking off the right side of the screen, only to walk out of the right side of another screen. And then, since I'm already holding right, I just end up walking right back the way I came, because the camera flipped around. This all could have been alleviated a couple of ways, to varying levels of effectiveness. They could have implemented a rotatable camera, so you could view everything from any angle, but to do this they'd probably just have to make it an open level that you can walk around instead of a series of segmented screens, which, okay, fine, maybe that's asking a bit too much for what they wanted to do. Alright, well how about adding a mini-map onto the screen? Like, at all times, just have a map constantly up. 
not having to constantly click a button to bring up the map screen would certainly help some. Navigation would still suck, but it would at least be a little easier to manage and keep track of. Or how about this? Minimap or not, just add in an arrow or something to show which direction your character is facing on the map. This would immediately let you know if your screen is oriented the same way as the map. It would really help, and it would be extremely simple to implement. And by the way, I've only been talking about the overworld so far. The map, the sights, all that great stuff. But I haven't even started talking about any of the actual games in this thing. This game is a minigame collection. And the reason I haven't talked about any of them yet is because I can't find them. At all. I mean, okay, I found a couple, but not Back to the Future. That's the one I want to start with. So, I'm holding out. Where the hell is it? Oh, God. This corpse of Jaws just hanging here? It's a literal nightmare. This would scare the hell out of me if I actually saw this in person as a kid. I have been trying to get to Back to the Future for literally 20 minutes. And I am lost. Please point me in the right direction, please. Someone help! I'm a child and I'm lost! I hate this place. I wish my parents never brought me here. Alright, make that 30 minutes. I honestly have no idea where I'm going or where I am. I cannot find my way around. This map does not help me at all. And now apparently I'm picking up garbage? That's a part of the game now. Picking up trash and putting it in the garbage cans. Please! Please somebody help me, I'm scared! At least I also have letters to find on the ground. Yeah, on top of picking up trash, you can find letters just hanging around that eventually spell out Universal Studios. And if you get them all, you get one of the eight collectible stamps. You also get stamps for completing each attraction, and also one for doing... <sighs> trivia? Yeah, Universal Studios trivia. I guess that's... I guess that's neat. Sure, cool. And thanks to the power of blind guessing, I beat the quiz. And that also gave me points! What, um, what's the significance of the points? And the stamps, for that matter. All I can really do is guess. The game hasn't really given me much of an idea yet. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. I'm sitting here. I could be out there. I could be seeing people for the first time in over a year. But I'm sitting here. I'm playing this game. Do I look like someone who knows anything about anything? No. I don't know. I guess the ultimate goal of this game is to collect all of the stamps. And as for the points, their currency. Currency to buy what? We'll get to that shortly. Oh, and by the way, we still haven't found Back to the Future. I've actually been going around in circles this entire time. I was wandering so long that I ended up back here at the start. Not on purpose. And at this point, I had accumulated so many points from picking up letters and garbage that I was able to buy a hat. Once again, we'll get to that later. Yes, you can buy hats. They serve a functional purpose in the game that we will talk about in a bit. But for now, I would actually like to play the game! On top of the disorientation problems that I mentioned before, this park is also just too damn big. So many screens with literally nothing on them except for, uh, you know, graphics to look at. They serve absolutely no purpose but to pad out time. And sometimes getting from one screen to another is really hard. Like it's hard to tell sometimes where you can walk and where you can't. Sometimes you'll go to walk down a clear and open street, but it's blocked by an invisible wall. While other times you'll have to exit a screen in a specific spot in order to access another completely different area. They put so much interesting stuff into this place for you to walk past. But you can't do anything with 90% of it. This theater here sure looks interesting, but I can't walk up to it. I can't go into it. It's just there. What's even the point of screens like this? Just to look cool? Nah, it's to simulate the fun of a real theme park. How you spend way more time when you go to a theme park just walking around looking at things than actually enjoying the attractions. So much of this game is just walking around. It's like, you pay for it, you show up, you spend 90% of your time walking around the place not doing anything fun at all, and then even the 10% that you spend on the attractions is only okay. Like, it's momentary fun. But even then, it's just, it's not worth the literal hours of suffering that you had to go through to wait in lines and walk around and get on the rides. Ugh! You know, I actually have to hand it to them. This is actually really realistic to theme parks. They really are this time-consuming and boring. Just, you know, maybe they went a little too far with the realism. It's not really a good advertisement to show how incredibly boring your theme park can be. Okay, I gotta buckle down and focus. I am finding Back to the Future, even if it kills me. This guy... Yeah, you... You really shouldn't be doing that in public. Please. Please stop. So if I go left here, it goes right. Okay, so I want to go right. No? 
No, that goes down. Okay, so I'll go down. Right? I mean, left. Damn it! This is hell. This horrible child got hit by a tractor on the way here, and this is his eternal torment. What if I spent the whole time in this review just never getting to the actual game? I mean, I passed by a few, but I want to play Back to the Future first. I'm holding out for that. It's the only one I actually care about, if I'm being completely honest. What if this was the entire review? I wonder if people would be mad. I'm not going to test it. I'm going to keep looking. Wait, I, I picked up trash? How was I supposed to even see that? It was so far in the background that... Whatever. It's fine. I'm moving on. I don't know where it is. I don't... <laughs> This is so freaking funny! <laughs> I just gotta laugh! <laughs> this game is insane! This game is completely insane! It's so bad! It's so bad! Oh! Oh, Waterworld! This is a new screen! That's progress! I haven't been here before! And finally, finally, I found it. It only took me 49 minutes. The worst part is... I don't even know how I got here. I just started running around maniacally at a certain point because I think I went a little crazy. And I just kind of ended up here. Okay, so after, I'll be honest, the funniest cutscene ever, like literally funniest cutscene I've ever seen in any game, the Back to the Future minigame starts and... Okay, no, sorry, you have to see this cutscene. I'm just gonna play it for you. Wow! Get in quick! Yeah, I know. That cutscene's a real treasure. It almost makes everything up to this point completely worthwhile. It doesn't! That That's hyperbole. Okay, so you drive the DeLorean and use it to chase after Biff, who is also in a DeLorean. Okay. And you basically just have to hit him enough times to stop him. To do so, you basically just need to not mess up too much. You know, not hit the walls, not let go of the gas. Even when you do mess up pretty bad, Biff just stops and lets you catch up, so it's not the end of the world. But the time limit that the game gives you is actually deceptively strict, despite how easy this game seems at first. You can really only afford to mess up a few times before you literally can't do it. This is not Grand Theft Auto, or some fun kart racer. There are no power-ups, there's no turbo speed buttons, there's no shortcuts, it's just a linear, railed racetrack. And that's it. It's extremely basic, but... It's okay, I guess. It doesn't control terribly, and the visuals are actually pretty fun. You fly through three different time periods during the level. It's pretty neat. This sounds absolutely nothing like Biff, though. Yeah! What are you doing? Like, seriously? You couldn't find someone to sound just a little more like the original actor? This isn't even close. It sounds nothing like him. But whatever. Three tries, and I got it. I was awarded a stamp. And now I'm back to the best part of the game. Walk it around! Yeah! Well, at least I passed by all the other attractions while looking for this one. So even though navigating this game is incredibly confusing, at least I sort of know where I'm going now. Though I am now being faced with a new issue. Lines. Yep, every theme park has lines. Lines that never move. Lines that, in this game, mean that you can't access any of the rides. And really, isn't it fun that after playing just one of the minigames, I am now not allowed to enter any of them anymore? Because of the lines? Isn't that just nifty? That they just kind of stop your progression like that? And here's where the hats come in. Yes, you can use your points to purchase hats, for varying prices. And wearing these hats will allow you to button line. It's basically a paid premium fast pass to get on whatever rides you want without having to wait. Or in this case, the only way of getting on the rides, aka playing the levels. You can also buy a one-use item that lets you play one game once, and it's much cheaper, but it's hardly worth it. it. You might as well just save up for the hats. So you'd better get to solving some trivia, and picking up garbage, and collecting letters on the ground that you can barely see. Seriously, that's one of the letters. That's one of the letters right there. It's just a pixel on the screen. It's insane. Another way you can get points is by shaking hands with the various mascots that you'll just randomly stumble across while walking around. It can get a bit uncomfortable at times. Like, this man is just a straight-up pedophile. He's just chasing me around. Stop. Alright, so fast forward. A lot. And I have all the hats. Now let's finally talk about the rest of the actual games. Let's just get Waterworld out of the way. 
it's... I mean, it's not a game. It's not a game at all. Literally, it's not a minigame. It's the only attraction to be this useless and stupid. You don't even get a stamp for it. It's completely useless. This attraction is literally just that. It's an attraction. It's a show. All it is is five short cutscenes, all exactly the same but from different camera angles. And that's it. Here you go, kids. It's almost like you're really there. Hope you enjoyed it. It's... I guess it's an animated version of what I would assume the real attraction is. A stage show where the audience gets splashed with water. And there's some pyrotechnics and... Look, I'm sure that this is really cool up close and in person. These special effects would be really cool to see in person. But this is just a bad cutscene in a bad video game. There's no point for this. Alright, next up is Jaws. I've had a great history with Jaws games, so I'm sure that this will be great. My first impression was that it really, really sucked. You have to throw things at Jaws before it can destroy the ship you're on, but I can only seem to be able to throw the barrels once Jaws comes close, meaning that he always manages to take a bite out of the boat. And even if I hit him every time he damages the boat, he always destroys it just before I manage to kill him. And I lose. Again and again. Well, it turns out that I was actually making a very simple mistake. The B button does not throw items. The A button throws them even though the game kind of tells you otherwise. I guess it was just bad wording, but I found it very confusing and misleading, personally. So now that I can actually throw stuff properly, and also I realize that you can get items from breaking open crates, it is now slightly less sucky. I mean, it's fine, I guess. It's harmless. It's pretty easy, and it's very simple, but yeah, this minigame's fine. I wouldn't really play it again, but it's fine. Okay, Jurassic Park. Amazing movie. I'm expecting a masterpiece worth my time. Alright, bad choice of words. This was probably the longest minigame out of all of them. Or, at the very least, it felt like it. You're in the back of a speeding vehicle shooting at dinosaurs with... a laser gun? It's kind of weird. But whatever, that's the game. You can lock onto multiple dinosaurs before releasing the button to fire, or just spam the button like crazy, or a combination of both. And at the end, you, of course, have to put down a T-Rex. Honestly, this attraction wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of fun. It was just a little long. I guess it kind of just overstayed its welcome a bit. Cut down the length a bit, though, and yeah, this one's good. Next up, E.T., the extra terrain vehicle. Ride a bike. Go over ramps. Fall. Dodge stuff in the forest. Fall. Jump in front of the moon like that one scene from the movie. Fall. Yeah, this one's just a bike ride with E.T., with a time limit. I should have paid more attention to the instructions, honestly, because I have no idea how to land these jumps without wiping out. And yet, despite this, I still won. And with a good score, apparently. Alright, well, I guess that's all there is to say about this one. Despite the unique and troubled history E.T. has with video games, this one's kind of just fine, I guess. Although I do want to take this time to mention, even though this technically has nothing to do with this game, E.T. is real! All of the other mascots you come across are clearly mascots. They're people in costumes. But E.T. here? He's just real. He's just the real E.T. walking around. Alright, Backdraft. I've literally never seen or heard of the movie, but I can assume that it's about fires. And yes, yes it definitely is. Walking around a burning building, putting out fires, and saving people. It's definitely the most complex and involved out of all the games. So, I'll give it that at least. They really tried with this one. But sadly, the controls are really bad. Navigation works the same as it does outside. You don't actually control the camera, instead you just walk to and from rooms. And when you reach a certain point, like a doorway, the camera just changes to the next area. But, unlike outside, every time the camera angle changes, you need to stop walking and then start walking again to reorient your directional control. It's hard to explain. Basically, um, for example, if you're holding up and you walk up, into another room, and then suddenly the camera angle changes and you're now walking out of the left hand of another screen, up is now registering as right, and right would be down, and so on. At least until you come to a stop and then continue moving, where the controls reset to what they would logically be. It literally works the opposite way as it does in the overworld, like in the park. Both ways of doing it are annoying, so at least have some damn consistency in your game. Right when I get used to walking around the park, I have to get used to this. This, mixed with a general rigidness, makes the game the hardest to control, easily. Plus, it's pretty long, and you have to keep track of health, fire extinguishers you can pick up, the time limit, as well as finding people to save them. It's a lot. I feel like I'm kind of a broken record here, but, you know, it's actually not the worst. I mean, I've played far worse games, it's harmless enough. 
if not pretty stressful. Though I guess it's rescuing people from a burning building, so maybe stressful is actually what they were going for. Though the ending of the level does go a bit too far, it gets really difficult near the end. So much fire and fireballs flying at you in the air and windows exploding, my god. So yeah, basically, Backdraft was intense. It controls pretty bad and it gets really difficult near the end. But apparently I saved every single NPC, so that's pretty cool. Also, at this point, I've realized something. There are actually two different types of stamps you can get. Blue stamps and red stamps. From what I can tell, you get blue whenever you complete a minigame. And you get red whenever you do well enough at the game to earn it. Whether that means playing that minigame perfectly or beating some sort of high score, I'm unsure. Alright, we're at the final attraction of the game. The Wild Wild West. It's just one of those stationary, first-person shooter games. Hit all of the targets faster than the computer character can and get more points than they do. I personally never enjoyed these types of quick-draw, first-person shooter games that use an analog stick or a, or a D-pad. If they use a light gun or something, then that's another thing. That can actually be pretty fun. It's still not my kind of game, but I can at least get behind the concept. But controlling a gun cursor with a controller? It just plain isn't fun to me. It's not fun at all. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, but I really don't have anything else to say about this. I guess if you enjoy these types of games, then this is probably the most flawless attraction in the entire game. It's probably the best minigame out of all of them, honestly. And yet, despite that, you still have barely anything to say about it. When did you get here? I'm always here. So, yeah. That's every minigame in the game. Every attraction at the park. So how is the game? You know, this may come as a shock to you all, but I don't think this game is very good. I know, I know, huge plot twist, but it's kind of a mess. So much of this game is just you wandering around between several pre-rendered backgrounds, desperately trying to play the actual game. And then the actual games are only okay. If this game was just the minigames, it still wouldn't be very good, but it would be mediocre. My biggest complaint would probably just be the lack of content, but this? is not a solution to that. It's all padding. Complete and utter padding. It doesn't add any value to the game. No, it subtracts it. They even try to pad out the game even more by adding in these slide puzzles and this memory game. I played these little mini games for far too long, specifically to rack up points, to buy hats, to play the actual mini games. Graphically, this game looks, I don't know, mediocre. I mean, it doesn't look offensively bad, but it doesn't look amazingly good either. It's a good example of a game from this era that didn't really try that hard. Some of the mini games look a bit better than other ones. The Back to the Future ride has some cool visuals, as I mentioned before, as does the Jurassic Park ride. And the Backdraft attraction does a pretty good job of creating a decent atmosphere. Partway through the game, the park enters this nighttime mode, so that's kind of a nice graphical treat. It adds some visual variety to the graphics of the overworld as you're forced to stare at it. And honestly, I think the park looks cooler at night. Everything just looks better. This corpse of Jaws is even creepier in the dark, though. I'll say it again, this is a nightmare. Musically, there's like one song that plays non-stop when walking around the park. I've been using it in the background of this review, so if you think it sounds good, then I guess it's good. And obviously, all the music lifted from the different movies is good as well. That just kind of goes without saying. And you know what's sad? Even after all my complaints and frustrations, the thing that I'm most upset about is the ending. See, I actually ended up collecting all but one of the red stamps. I beat Back to the Future fast enough to earn it. I got enough points in Jurassic Park. I saved all the NPCs in Backdraft. I even collected every stupid letter in the overworld and spelt out Universal Studios. But I never got a perfect score in the trivia, which is how I'm assuming you get the red stamp in that. I missed a single red stamp. I know I really shouldn't care. It does not matter at all. But it still annoys me, to no end. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that after beating all of the attractions, you can go talk to Woody Woodpecker at the entrance and trigger the magic show, which I guess is basically the end of the game. I did this thinking that I could see the ending and then come back and beat the trivia after and see if the ending was any different. But after watching the magic show, it asks you if you want to save, and like a complete idiot, I did! Not knowing that doing so would restart the flipping game. So now they're gone! All of my progress destroyed! I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. This game sucks. I shouldn't care. But to come so close to getting all of the stamps, only for this to happen due to the game not explaining that this was a point of no return... God, I hate this game! I hate this game so much! I could have gotten all the red stamps. I could have done it. 
Yeah, because I'm sure that really would have changed your life. All right, well, it sucks. Obviously, it's a bad game. This is one of the worst GameCube games I've ever played. You pick up trash, you get lost, you do boring trivia, and you get lost again. You solve slide puzzles, which are never fun. In any game, slide puzzles are never fun. And then the real mini games are only okay. So what is there really to say at this point? Endless padding and filler, inconsistent controls, not to mention bad controls at times, uninspired graphics and gameplay, terrible overall design. Yeah, it's a terrible game. The end. If you want to have a fun Universal Studios experience and you can't travel yet, then just watch the movies that this game is based on. You will have infinitely more fun if you just watch all those movies. Except Waterworld. You don't really have to watch that one.